Hi, my name is Naomi Lee Young, my Chinese name is Long Puyan, and I'm an 18-year-old climate and racial justice activist, and I organize with Sustainability Teens and Climate Education Reform BC. I'm a Chinese-Malaysian settler and uninvited guest on unceded and unsurrendered Musqueam, Swasin, Kwantlen, and Cowichan First Nations territories, or colonially known as Richmond, British Columbia. In this episode, I'm going to explore the state of climate education in Canada. As young people, we know that the climate crisis is the biggest threat to our future. But are we being given the tools and knowledge to address it? To get a better picture of the state of climate education in Canada, I reached out to Dr. Ellen Field at Lakehead University. In 2018, Dr. Field conducted a survey that assessed Canadians' knowledge and perceptions of climate change and climate education. Hi, Dr. Field. Hi, Naomi. How you doing? Good. It's so great to see you. So in your opinion, do you think Canadians are aware of climate change and its risks? So Canadians know that climate change is happening and that they're concerned about the risks it has to their lives. In my research, 79% of Canadians are concerned about the impacts of climate change and 78% believe the risk to people in Canada. Would you say that Canadians have a good sense of climate science? In general, Canadians think they're significantly more informed on the science than they actually are. And in my research, we had 10 questions around foundational climate science, and 43% of Canadians failed this brief knowledge test. The good news is that 86% of Canadians agree they need more information on climate change. And with a background in education and as a researcher yourself, what would you say that educators and students need? From the research, it was very clear that schools need to be doing more to educate uh, young people, students about climate change. It also shows, given the results we have, that there is wide support for schools to be doing more climate change education and that there are current gaps in knowledge and understanding among our teachers, among our students, as well as real readiness to learn more. So. This is where our policymakers really need to take leadership here and do everything they can to improve the quality of climate change education in our current systems. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. Really appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for the invitation and the opportunity. We can see that there are huge gaps in the supply of resources, training, and support for teachers, and a huge demand for an increase in preparing youth with climate solutions. These factors point to a need for systemic change to prepare youth and educators for the climate emergency. The reality is students deserve better. We deserve to feel informed, engaged, and empowered through education in the face of a broken system. This is why for the past year, I've been working with Climate Education Reform BC, a youth-led movement advocating for an intersectional and justice-driven climate education in British Columbia. We know that youth deserve a voice in climate education. So working together with scientists, parents, students, and our community, we put together a set of needs that we think should be considered when building a climate educational system. Our full list is very comprehensive, but today I'm gonna to share some of the key things that we need to consider when implementing climate education. Number one, scale. In order to adapt to the full scale of the climate crisis, climate justice education must be woven into all subjects in school classrooms. From social studies to sciences to math and career planning, educating students on climate solutions and how they can be a part of them is essential. Number two, justice. Our education must describe how climate change does not affect people equally. Rather, climate change disproportionately hurts indigenous, black, and other communities of color and historically exploited populations the hardest. You can take a look at episode two in this series to learn more about intersectional environmentalism. Number three, community care. Processing a global emergency is massively overwhelming. Therefore, our educational system must provide trauma-informed climate education. These spaces must enable youth to process their climate anxiety, grief, and emotions together in community so that resilience, joy, and hope can be fostered. Number four, collective action. Because our school system reflects the priorities of society, we must collectively reimagine what education can look like. At the heart of this vision is a firm belief that if we are going to be effective, we must work together. In doing this, we can unlearn destructive patterns and recenter community care and our relationship with the environment. 
For most of my life, I didn't see myself in environmentalism because people like me were not represented. Now, through education, I've learned how valuable our voices are and how impactful women of color have been in the climate justice movement. What if our educational system taught us about the collective power we have to face the biggest crises of our time? Surely then, we would be equipped to build a better world. I believe that this reality is attainable if we use our collective power to call on our governing bodies to create this reform. And we need your voice in the climate education movement.